What advice would you give them to reposition old molecules, to try to resist like a Gaulish village? Against planned obsolescence? There is nothing more cynical than planned obsolescence. In the field of medicine, who experiences planned obsolescence with their phone charger? I find it revolting, to some extent, but it's not on the same level as when a human life is at stake. In the European Union, there was a whole movement, a sort of pride in saying, look, we have imposed a standardized charger for phones. We'll see what happens. We have imposed a standardized charger for phones like this. We will fight against planned obsolescence. But that was really just scratching the surface because planned obsolescence is the fundamental culture of the pharmaceutical industry. As you have just explained. So, how do we go about it, for example, tomorrow, if you had a kit to transmit in this video, which we hope will reach hundreds of thousands of people, if you had an intellectual kit from the decades that you have for a young French, African, or South American researcher who follows you closely there and who has looked at the politics of Mexico to tell them, here's how a guerrilla manual discovery happened, of course, those who are currently dominating the world in the world's link to the world. I know very well that everything comes from China currently. I used to consider my only rivals to be Chinese. I no longer have rivals in the United States, I don't have any in Europe, to tell the truth, in what I do. The reason is, just to our audience, in what you do specifically. You talk about infectious diseases, you talk about, yes, diseases, you know, to simplify things. At the IHU, in the span of 30 or 40 years, we have discovered and described one-third of all the microbes known in humans since the dawn of humanity. Not bad. How long has the IHU been around? The IHU itself has been around since 2010, okay, but I started my unit. I started in 1984, that's when I was young. So, with the whole gang around. So, we found, we discovered, we destabilized the entire world of viruses. Because we discovered giant viruses, the first giant viruses. We will talk about it later, the mama viruses. Of course, the very nature of the human microbiota. And the cultivated microbes of the human microbiota, we have made 90% of them. Okay, we have spent our lives on diseases, therapies, and microbes, so to speak, and the reason is that we are in a, it's not really a choice, it's a, nature, we are in the nature of discovery, and it so happens that I, truly believe that for the past 30 years, biology has been the equivalent, exactly, if you make a parallel. It's exactly the discovery of. It's Christopher Columbus, okay? I feel closer to Christopher Columbus than even to a number of 20th century Nobel Prize winners in medicine, none of whom I display because someone else would have found it anyway. The audacity that comes from a proposition that is false, that I still want to see, if you will, and when I discover, I discover, and it will open up, change. The entire vision abruptly, we will have to rewrite all the maps, change all the theories, or to give another example if you don't want to take Christopher Columbus, Pythias, who was from Marseille, of Greek origin, of course, who in the 4th century BC took a boat and went to Norway, discovered icebergs, discovered England, and discovered the midnight Sunday. Do you know how long it took for us to know that what Pythia said was true? Do you know how long it took for our society to accept it? Do you know? 18 centuries, okay? So, all the geography we learned from Ptolemy said it was a fantasy of dreamers and that it wasn't true. They described mountains of ice, and it was completely against any concept. That there could be a place where there was no day and night. It was unthinkable, okay? So, you know, all this is not new, but now, we are in a period like the era of great navigators. So, we have to go and look because we have a new tool, we have an open horizon. And in reality, what I suggest, if people want to discover, there are three major epistemologies that have described the mechanism of discovery. So, the first is Popper, who describes, who says listen. Each new tool changes observation. And therefore changes our field of knowledge. And so, for me, that has been one of my major strategies, I've been in an arms race, I have always had, throughout my life, the laboratory, or at least for the past 30 years. The best equipped microbiology laboratory in the world. Because innovation was technological, much more than my colleagues. And so, I liked technology. 
So, I had the first automatic sequencers in microbiology in the world. I had them in my lab since 92. And then, I continued with the sequencing, doing higher level sequencing. When in France, people refused to do sequencing. Then we had the Maldi TOF, where we looked at proteins, we had the most abundant Maldi TOF park in the world. We had eight Maldi TOF, whereas the second laboratory in the world. Brookake, who told me that at the time, had three. And now, we're still on another thing, which is the next tool that I'm implementing. So, each tool allows us to see a part of the world that was unknown until the existence of that tool. And so, we must rush to the tools. That's the first thing. The second thing is Kuhn's lesson, which says, we must change paradigms because it's not enough to change tools. That's what explains the enormous tensions between the moment when the new tool allows us to see something new and the moment when we manage to destroy the previous scientific theory, because we have to change paradigms, because that's Kuhn's big word. And so, at some point, we must stop believing. Nietzsche said that, we must shatter our virtuous heart of our masters, at some point. We must no longer believe what we have been taught because it's never true. And that's extremely difficult because the earlier you were taught, the more false it is, okay? And the harder it is to admit that it's false, and so I tell my colleagues. Neurogenesis in neuroscience. It's true that when I was at Norma Suisse, we were taught that neurons did not reproduce in the central nervous system in adults, we now know that it's false.